Syndicate attack is another important attack against Active Directory. In order to understand this attack completely, we have to first jump into a normal scenario in which a user tries to log into the domain. So here we have a user on the left side and we have a DC on the right side. So the user tries to log into the domain. And as you can imagine, the user enters his or her password. Her password is going to be sent to DC as ntlmv2 hash. And here, a part of a DC, which is a protocol called Kerberos, which is responsible for authentication and authorization of the users in the domain, it has a part called KDC, Key Distribution Center. So this KDC or Key Distribution Center is responsible for creating different TGTs and also keys. So it will create a TGT. And what exactly a TGT is, so we have to just focus on a TGT for one moment. TGT stores something in it which is called session key. This is the most important information stored in a TGT. Although there are also another bunch of information in TGT, but the most important component of that is the session key in which the KDC wants to send to the user. This TGT is not going to be sent to the user in a clear text, of course. It's going to be encrypted and also it's going to be signed in order to ensure its confidentiality and integrity. So here there might be a question in your mind that where exactly these signing and encryption keys come from? So when we create our DC, there is a service account, built-in service account, gets created in our DC automatically, which is called KRBTGT, or it's a little bit hard to pronounce. It's Kerberos Ticket Granting Ticket Service Account. This service account gets created automatically in our DC when we create our DC. And of course, as any other service account, it has its own password. So its own password is also created automatically. From this password, there are going to be two keys that are going to be driven. One of them is encrypting key, which is used for encryption of the TGT. The other one is the other blue key that you can see, the right one, which is used for signing the TGT in order to ensure the integrity of TGT. So these two blue keys come from this service account. From the password of the service account, these two blue keys are driven, and then these are going to be used in order to encrypt the TGT and also sign the TGT. But keep it, keep it in mind that no other object in our domain has or actually owns these two blue keys. These two blue keys are in the hand of our KDC. Nobody else has it, so the user does not have any access to this signing key, these two blue keys. So you might ask that, so what is the purpose of sending this TGT to the user? The user does not have these two blue keys, so it cannot decrypt it. So how can it exactly get access to the session key which exists in the TGT? So here we have to just understand that there's also another information sent from KDC to the user. So that was only the, the first part. In the second part, the KDC also sends the session key. The session key and also some bunch of other information like timestamp and uh, other things. So the session key, as you can see, this purple key is exactly the same as the session key that was stored in the TGT. So this session key is going to be encrypted this time with the credential of the user. So it's going to be encrypted with the credential of the user. And as you can imagine, the user can use its own credential in order to decrypt this and in order to get access to this purple key, to this session key. So, and here, as you can see, the user has received the TGT and also that encrypted session key. The user cannot do anything with the TGT because it does not have those two blue keys, but it has its own credentials, which, we, which it can use in order to decrypt that session key. So it gets access to that session key. And as you can see here, now the user has two things in his or her hand. So the TGT and also the session key. 
Um, here in this scenario, of course, it's imaginable that the user wants to get access to any service available in a domain. For example, he or she wants to get access to a SQL service or maybe wants to get access to a shared folder. It can be any service within a domain. So for getting access to that, it requires to send a request to the DC. In that request, it has to say that, hey, I want to use this service, which is available in this domain. So um, please give me a TGS. So the user needs TGS in order to get access to those services. So it sends its own request to DC. But this request is not going to be in clear text, of course. The user is going to use the purple key, the session key that it has, received from the DC in earlier stages in order to encrypt this request. So as you can see here, this request now is encrypted with that purple key, with the session key, which is actually a symmetric key. So now that it, this request is encrypted with the symmetric session key and the TGT is also in the hand of the user, the user sends these two bunch of information to DC. When the user sends its own TGT and also encrypted request to the DC, the DC starts decrypting the TGT with these two blue keys. The two blue keys that they belong to Kerberos Ticket Granting Ticket Service Account. By decrypting this TGT, the DC gets access to the session key that is stored in this TGT. It has already done it by itself. It will use then this purple key that you can see here in this TGT, which is the session key, in order to decrypt the request of the user. And after decrypting the request of the user, it will understand that the user has told, hey, I want to get access to this service, give me the TGS which I need in order to get access to this specific service. And it will just issue a TGS for the user in later stages. But now we have now that we have understood the whole scenario, let's just focus on that weak point that we as penetration testers we can penetrate in order to actually implement this attack. So here, as you can see, we have KRBTGT service account on the right side in blue, and there's also its password that the, those two blue keys are driven from, the password of KRBTGT password. Um, the weak point, as you have already may guessed, is actually the password of KRBTGT. Because if we get access to the password of this service account, we can easily use the static algorithms which are used in order to derive encrypting and signing key, these two blue keys, in order to derive easily these two blue keys. So. After getting access to this encrypting and signing key, which are actually these blue keys, we can simply sign and also encrypt our own TGT, which means that we can simply create our own TGT, forge a TGT. So when we forge a TGT and when, you, when we have these two blue keys, we can simply encrypt it, we can simply sign it and then send it to the DC. And so, in other words, we have gained this capability in order to create TGT and in order to forge it. That is what exactly Golden Ticket Attack is, forging TGT. But here, in order to get access to the password of KRBTG service account, there is a question, where exactly this password is? So. Here in this picture, as you can see, the password of KRBTHD service account is actually stored in Active Directory Database, NTTS.DIT. Also, LSASI, which is Local Security Authority, which is a process responsible for handling the security policies, it also has the password of the service account in its process memory. So, if Elsassi also has the password of the service account in its process memory, then we can simply dump the Elsassi process memory in order to get access to the password of KRBTJT service account. And that is what exactly we're going to do. 
So as pen tester, we're going to use Mimi Cat's tool here in order to dump the Elsassi process memory in order to get access to, this, to the password of a user called KRBTGT. And as a result, we can get access to this password and we can drive the encrypting and signing key, which are these two blue keys. If you have this question, how exactly do we get um, access to the encrypting and signing key, these two blue keys, from the password of the service account? The answer is actually the algorithms which are used in order to drive in these two blue keys are publicly available and they're also static. So if we have get access to the password of the service account, we drive these two keys and we can make, we can be sure that these two blue keys are exactly the, those two blue keys that DC is using. So afterward, we, we can just create our own session key and this purple key, this session key also does not have so complicated verification. So it's, it does not go under complicated verification process by DC. So it must be only AES symmetric key and it must only um, actually meet some um, limited requirements and it will be okay and it will be accepted and verified by a DC. So no, pr no reason for being worried about how to create the session key. What if the DC does not actually verify and uh, accept this session key? That, that, there is no such worries about this. And then afterward, we can just create our request encrypted with our session key. We can create our TGT, put our session key in the TGT, and also use those two blue keys, encrypting and sign key, in order to encrypt our TGT and in order to sign it. And yeah, finally, we have fantastically forged TGT. The TGT will get sent to DC. The DC will use its own two blue keys, which we have already gotten access to it, in order to decrypt the TGT and in order to verify it. It gets access to the purple key existing in a TGT and it uses that session key in order to decrypt our request. Afterward, it will give us the TGS. So yeah, the domain now is under our control. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Next video, we're going to jump into the practical lap of this golden attack.